We'll create this knurled bolt using a workflow you likely haven't seen before, then finish with the drawing. As always, keyboard shortcuts appear in the bottom left corner, starting with the first rule of Fusion, creating a new component. Start your sketch on a construction plane. Keeping your design centered above the origin is a good habit. It offers advantages in various design scenarios. Here, we'll create a center diameter circle. Feel free to use your own dimensions if 50 mm doesn't suit your needs. Here's a quick time-saving tip. You can jump straight from the sketch environment to another command without finishing the sketch first. I'll set this base to 15 mm. Next, we'll add chamfers for a cleaner finish. It's faster and easier to apply them now before adding a complex pattern. Doing it after applying the complex pattern would put unnecessary strain on your computer. Here's where this workflow gets interesting. Create a new sketch, then press and hold the left mouse button until a menu appears. This lets you select deeper geometry, like the construction plane behind your solid body in this case. Next, create your text and position its window next to your solid model. Ensure the text rectangle is larger than the model, keeping equal spacing at the top and bottom. This makes it easier to center the text relative to your model. We'll use the letter X for our knurled pattern. Set the alignment to center and middle for proper positioning. I find Arial too thick, so I'll switch to a thinner font. At this point, the letter X should be positioned next to your model on a central construction plane, ensuring it's aligned with the middle of your solid body. Next, we'll use the emboss tool with the deboss effect. The text serves as our sketch profile and the solid body as our face. I'm setting the depth to 1 mm, but feel free to experiment with different values to achieve the look you want. Some of you have probably reverse engineered this in your head, and you're right. We'll use a circular pattern. Set the object type to features, and if you have trouble selecting your feature, zoom in for better precision. Press and hold the left mouse button to select the blue set axis at depth, then set a quantity. I'll go with 50, which works well for this model. Before running the calculation, it's smart to save your project. Complex patterns can be demanding and may increase the risk of a crash depending on your model's complexity and your computer's performance. As you can see in the bottom right corner, the calculation took a moment before the diamond pattern appeared. As mentioned, it's best to save before creating complex patterns, but since I forgot, I made sure to save right after instead. Start the threaded section of the knurled bolt with a simple sketch on top of the body. This follows the same fast-paced workflow as before. Positioning the sketch centrally and jumping straight into the extrude command without closing the sketch first. I'll set the height to 75 mm and keep it as a join operation since I want everything as a single body within this component. There are a few key tips to keep in mind when creating a thread. You have several settings to adjust including thread type, size and direction. You can also decide whether to create a simple visual representation keeping the model lighter and faster, or to model the thread fully, which is necessary for 3D printing. If you only want to thread part of your model, uncheck full length. In this example, I'll apply the thread to 60 mm of the total 75 mm length. You've completed two of the three key steps in this tutorial, the knurled diamond pattern and the threaded section. Now, let's finish up with the drawing using from design, 
found in the workspace picker. A few interesting options appear. You can automate the process with an automatic drawing or create a manual drawing. In this tutorial, we'll focus on manual drawings with automated elements. You can also start a new drawing or use a template, adjusting settings like units, sheet size and orientation. Your drawing opens in a separate file with a distinct symbol next to its name and you'll need to save it separately. The toolbar layout will feel familiar and on the far right you'll find useful export options including PDF. We'll start by placing a base view anywhere on the drawing. In the base view settings you can easily adjust its orientation, scale and style. Once confirmed the settings apply instantly. The toolbar offers a range of useful tools and one key feature we'll explore is the ability to add a projected view. This workflow starts by selecting a parent view. From there you can easily create projected views in different orientations which automatically inherit the parent view's settings. Adding dimensions is just as straightforward as in the regular workspace. In this tutorial, we'll focus on automated dimensions found next to the manual dimension tool. When using auto dimensions, a dialog appears, allowing you to choose a strategy that best fits your drawing. You have options like baseline dimensions, chain dimensions, ordinate dimensions, overall dimensions, symmetric dimensions, and symmetric with baseline dimensions. Auto dimensions don't affect dimensions that you've already placed manually. You can also adjust the intensity of different dimensions to refine your drawing. Once you're satisfied with your dimensioning strategy, Head to the top right corner to export your drawing. While exporting as a PDF is the most common option, you can also export as DWG, DFX or CSV. A handy time saver when exporting as PDF is to check the open PDF before exporting box. I hope you picked up some useful tips and tricks in this Fusion tutorial. I look forward to reading your comments below. Happy 3D modeling and I'll see you in future fusion and 3D printing tutorials.